I think someone would say instead is Samuel L. Jackson. Because I said the other thing that Samuel L. Jackson usually says. I got to start this review at some point. So, hi. Zio Spantera, your host. Z Reviews, Inner Fetish, Z Unboxing, Z Cucks, Z Second Channel. And um, don't forget to check out my Patreon, where if you support me, you get to see reviews early, participate in yard sales, and for $10 a month, you get to ask me any questions you want directly in the patronage chat, where you get into a lifetime swap meet. Anyway, this... Ugh, it's still not clean, but uh, I did my best. It's just, it's glass. This is like glass. In fact, it's probably a reflection of me. This is the Black Eyes Audio Fusion F360. And if you remember the little guy that we reviewed, the SSX, that was a knob for adjusting a thing, and then a tube, and then a switch for like a thing, and it was like under six hundred dollars, and it did this magical shit where it, it made the sound stage wider or narrower on a set of speakers or a set of headphones, anything that you plugged into it. Well, take that concept and expand to anything you plug into it now, also including balanced and adding completely dedicated rear channel outputs. So I'm trying to do. <sighs> so shit just came out with the new Sven or Sven or Sin. The um, SYN, I think, S-Y-N. And it's their surround sound unit. And I'm going to probably get one. I, I emailed out this shit. I'm going to get one. I want to plug it in. And I want to, oh, I got center channels, subs, and everything else. This is much more expensive. This isn't a real surround sound processor. But Jim Fosgate, who basically, like, one of the daddies of Dolby, um, helped design the circuit in here. And it has a tube to do the preamping. And there's... A problem with it in the fact that all these cool knobs and switches um, you're going to want to diddle with. You want to, this is a diddling unit. You diddle with it. And what it does is almost the same as the little small guy, little, little $600 one, only better with more. And then we're going to integrate some rear channels in. And don't forget, there's a subwoofer out. And a remote control to control the volume. So I, I need to get this hooked up again. So let's just take a quick browse on the inside. Because I wanted to know. Because they were going to send me, or I was going to go out and buy some uh, 6S N7. These are the 6S of GT. So the tube in here, which is the preamp tube, takes any of your signal sources that are in here. And when it brings it around to the front, do its thing. It does get uh, preamped. And it's a pretty good tube on there. Right now we've got a what's it called tech. Hold on. We've got a Sov tech in there. And I've got I'm gonna be using these Swan M3As for my front channels. So this doesn't do a center channel. Like it isn't a surround sound. But let me how do I put this where it doesn't sound like I'm just a crazy person? Once you plug one of these into your sound systems. Even if you're just using it as a volume control, because just right here, volume knob, boom, up and down with the little motor attached, so you can do the remote control of it. Once you have this in your sound system, and even if you were just to leave it as doing like slight sound stage adjustments for, for narrower or wider, then you just get the smaller one. But then you add a subwoofer, tone controls, and then you can just gently ease up this knob, which then takes the processed sound, does things to it completely in the analog realm. There is no, there is no digital in here, but completely under analog can take some of those sounds that are being pushed to the front, put them to the rear, and you could fade them in. And you just get this, like, you get encompassed, basically. I've been using this unit, this basement. If you don't know about this basement area, this is my little my little testing area. And usually there's speakers that I haven't reviewed, Broadmans and things. But these are my M3As. I bought these back in the old apartment with my own cold hard cash for 1200 bucks. And I said they're like one of the more audiophile, just like buy it giant monster wooden box speakers. And I set them up instead of listening to the clip surround sound. And then I stole the rear channels off of it, off the little Klipsch amplifier, the KD-1000. I hooked it all up to this. Look at the fucking mess in the floor. We're going we're gonna to get to the problems with this unit in that you want it to be right there. We're like, all right, I'm going to hook it up, and then I'll explain the hookup and the functions and then the things I've experienced playing with it. Because that's what you're here for. This is the basic, like, ooh, 
pretty things on the inside. I love this. It's, oh, yeah. Mm, America, baby. That's another thing. America. And the glass fascia, which after using it for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I mean weeks and weeks and weeks, without like, oh, I don't feel like using it. Like, I want to use my surround. No. This was enough. I watch a lot of two-channel stuff, aka anime. And having this and the ability to do the tuning of the soundstage for like vocals and fight scenes and breaking out to the rears, I could live with just this over like proper surround sound. I mean, I've got the sub under here, the little Dynamo 400, which we'll get to. You know what? I'm going to hook this back up. And the problem is, I don't want to hook it up here to watch it on the TV. I'm going to hook it up next to my little, my love throne right here on this extremely expensive Canto stand because this is where it makes the most sense. And I'm going to have to try to convince you of that now. All right. House, house, house. It's Basement Jack's uh, house scene. And we're here with the fusion where I would love to tell you to put it. I would love beyond all hope because I actually usually have a little bit lower. It's down here. I put it on a, a little sound rise stand on top of the Canto stand to get it like more in your face. Um, but here's the thing about this unit. If you buy one and it's not cheap, it's two gemstones in the title. If you buy one, you're going to want to touch it. And not just touch it and then like sit down, because that's the way they've been doing it. Like audio shows, they had this at a uh, Capital Audio Fest, and they actually had a Capital Audio Fest with um, their front channels were Forte Fours, and their back channels were Forte Fours. And I was like, oh, you may have overdone it. Um, I'd love to help them set up something like this next time because I've got those there. I've got the uh, there's a Swan M3As. I have a, the Dynamo 400 Martin Logan sub right there in the middle on top of actual spring compressors just for fun, and I'm using the Swan highlight, uh, Swan DIY 3.1s, which are my rears going through a Klipsch a KDA 1000. Now the back of this unit, we should probably look at the back of it before we continue on to the explanation of how it's working, is from left to right, record in and out. So this is a feature that isn't like used a lot. A lot of time recordings, it actually even says it in the on the webpage, it's for like vintage or anyone using slightly older record loops, where if you flip the switch, no sound comes out of your setup, but it's actually running through and supposed to run back into your setup. So it kind of makes it interesting in case you want to use some sort of weird functionality where you have the two ends. Am I running over something on this ball? So record loops in and out. You get your signal in, and uh, here input one is shared as an RCA or an XLR. I don't believe you should use them both at the same time. There are four four other pairs of RCA inputs. So you get five RCA inputs and one XLR, but if you use the XLR, don't use the other input. I am coming off of this, which is the SMSL DO200 Mark II, which when I do that shootout between the 200 and the 300, I'm like, why even bother? Just keep the 200. And I'm feeding this two signals. So instead of using the switcher here where I can just go click, click for analog, I'm actually using the II-2S from the uh, SPDIF X3 or the three SPDIF X uh, over there coming from the computer. So the computer is feeding flack out to the the uh, SPDIF X SPDIF into here through II-2S through a long HDMI cable. And I've got a second input, which is this coaxial digital coming from the turntable over there because I've got the puffin. If you haven't seen my review of the Puffin, I don't know if it's it's currently like out of stock as of two weeks ago, but it's a phono preamp that is completely digital. So you feed it your, your RCAs from your turntable and you set all your settings. You set your RIA curves. You set it to remove pops and clicks with magic. You set all your things, your balances within tenths of a decibel. And then if you get the more expensive unit, it actually gives you fiber optic output, which I'm then converting down there to Coboxal Digital because I have just more coaxial digital cables so this goes here now so i can actually drop that turntable needle because it is spinning we've got the uh the best of tarantino over there and i could run that through this nice DAC and then run that out to here so we're not looking at this although this is very important so we got our five inputs you get front outputs in rca which if this 
wasn't blocking this this from the Soundrise stand. I would have another headphone amp up here. I was using the matching HO200 headphone amp because I was able to output the uh, XLRs to the front speakers, which again, we're using the Swans, and I was using RCAs out to the headphone amp. So I was able to use both at the same time, which meant I was able to, because I'm able to literally stop these speakers from working using a remote control, it's... We're going to have to talk about volume controls for a bit, but let me get finished with this. So you got your XLR outs to either an amplifier or a set of powered monitors or anything you want to use in the front or RCA out for the front. And you have um, another four RCAs here, two which are back outputs. These are the signal cables, just RCAs going over that Klipsch KDA 1000 amplifier. Next to it, you have options for stereo subs. Which I talked to them about it, and they're not. A, they're they're like, well, you could just want to hook up two subwoofers and not use a splitter. They have a mono sub option next to it. The only benefit you'd get with stereo subs is, I believe, it would follow the exact same thing that are happening to the back outputs. Which we're going to talk about that when we talk about the effects, because the effects you apply to the front apply to the front and rear at the same time. If you raise a treble or bass in the front, you raise it to the rear at the same time, and I believe that would carry over to the subs. Um, in stereo versus just in mono. You get your AC input, you got a ma an actual massive on-off switch in the back, but you don't have to use the on-off switch in the back because, and this this is gonna freak people out. Block the light. You see that piece of glass that says, that's the uh, uh, Black Eyes logo? There you go, I turned it off and on again. It's a touch screen. So you just touch it. And of course that pops the 33rd time I turn it on and off. Here's the remote, by the way, we gotta let that blink. It has a built-in timer to let the tube warm up. So even though a tube is warm, it's been on for a while, it's going to initiate that timer and make sure your tube is ready to go before you do anything. The remote control is quite heavy, quite made of aluminum, and has four things. Standby, which will do the thing we just did, um, which is a soft standby. So you don't have to reach behind the unit. You can just put it in your cabinet and turn it on. You get volumes up and down, which you can see volume turn up. Volume turned down. It's at a good speed. Um, these are also ball bearings. And there is a mute function, which unfortunately... Um, well, actually, no, I'm wrong. It does blink that. I was like, does that... Oh, and apparently the mute button also turns on and off my fireplace. I don't blame that on black ice. I blame that on my Napoleon fireplace. But it's nice. Now we've, we've literally officially added to the ambiance. And considering there's a tube in it, we're burning, burning, I love it. So you do get a mute button, which turns on my fireplace. The front of the unit now, now we're moving on to the front. So you get your uh, capacitive touch on the glass standby button, which when the first time I turned this on, I'm like, where's the button? Because I'm not used to that. And that's nice. That feels nice to do. You get an on-off switch for the display. Um, if you know what the little display did on the other one, you'll watch it here. It'll do the same thing. We have a dimension, narrow and wide knob here. This is an important knob. This is the fun knob. This is the effects knob. Then you have your back, back level, BK level here, which um, because I didn't go into that amplifier's uh, network setup and lower the gain, only has to go about there. It gets loud like there, like like and it's loud. So if you had a different amplifier, different speakers, or different setup that had its own easy to adjust volume control, you'd be able to set this to half and then set your speaker amp to wherever is comfortable for that. This way you had a little more control here versus there. This whole unit is about control. And they, they say that over and over again on the webpage, control, 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 and it's got it. But you gotta understand you're taking a lot of responsibility installing this into your system because you're gonna have the only way I can describe it is a good time. So moving over, here's your main volume control, the thing you're gonna to be touching all the time, the thing that you can remote control here. Um, it's actually pretty linear. I actually did enjoy, like it, it's stiffer to move than the other knobs because it has that motor behind it, but it is very smooth. Um, below that is your equalizer on or bypass switch. Here are your equalizers. So you got high EQ and low EQ. And I think they boast like 15 decibels of, of, of swing, 11 to 15 on these. It's a lot, but they do something to control the low end so you don't get like a weird womp. I forget what they specifically said, but you know, it's fine. We'll get to it. Here's your input select with the five switches, 
we are going through the XLR, so I'm using it on input one. And here's your loop record loop function, which turns on those RCAs in the back, where if you wanted to literally bypass essentially this unit and have it come through, you would do that. Um, and now we're sitting here, we're ready to go. So basement jacks is on, we could swap to something else. The volume is all the way down. Oh, Frontier Justice, we don't hear that. So let's see, I've got bypassing the EQ, so no EQ on. I've got the back level, the back speakers on zero. I got the dimension set to zero, straight up and down. So the EQ is not currently functioning. We shouldn't be adding too much dimension and we're not adding any back level at all. So what we're experiencing right now is a set of speakers that I love and care for with a sub, because a subwoofer, I, if there was something I wanted to add to this, and there's plenty of things I want to add to this, because it's like, this is so cool, I want more. It would be a subwoofer control because the bass control will control what goes to the sub, but not dedicated. So if you ever wanted to have your 2.1 just be a 2.0, you'd have to literally unplug the sub or turn it off. So when I'm playing John Wick 3 um, Antique Gun Assembly, that is as close to normal as we can get this unit to play. And I can tell you one thing. I can tell it's a tube preamplifier because it's definitely just bringing this to a nice, like subtly, it's a tube pre. It's a black ice tube pre. It may only be one tube sitting in the inside of this unit, which by the way, um, I didn't talk about it, but there's no vents except for the bottom and rear of this box. And the tube is sitting directly here and you don't really feel any warmth. There's so much free space in there to allow it to just be a warm tube. Not a hot tube, it's not a power tube. It's just warm enough to do its thing. This is nice, this is comfy. This is like fireside chats with Zeus. So the tube's in there doing its thing, all warmed up. You got your carbon fiber wrapped. It's not real carbon fiber. You can actually, here's another thing about black ice. They're a small operation, so if you actually email them and say, hey, I'm looking to pick up a Fusion F360, could you not wrap it in carbon fiber? I mean, I like the look of it, but I also like when things are what they look like. So if it looks like wood, it better be wood. It better not be plastic painted like wood. So like the carbon fiber thing throws me off a little bit. Like this glass, that's glass. And if you're going to mount this in a cabinet, you're probably not going to see the sides anyway. So you could just request that they don't put that on there. Just, just one of those things. So our display, actually, uh, I don't want to keep playing the same song because God knows what the hell YouTube's going to do. Showing what is considered front center mono information, which is like the boom, boom, booms are happening and they're happening in phase and they're happening in the front. So they're happening on the F channel. If there was a fully left or fully right sound, it would be indicated here. And anything it can detect and displace as a rear channel or as an out of phase sound, which would then be affected by the dimension, shows up as BK, which these always have a slight glow to them as they're going along, even with nothing playing. Stranger Things. Wow, Space Dandy. I don't know how Space Dandy's gonna work with copyright, but it's beautiful music. So now we sit here and I'm controlling the volume. Zeos, I don't need to have this thing sitting near me to control the volume. No, you don't. But what you do need it to be near you for is so when you put it up, let's put the back level up just a little bit. We're just gonna guesstimate right now. Just the back level, all I've changed is put that up a little bit. And now we're gonna raise the volume. Holy crap. So quadraphonic was a thing. I'm probably gonna use that in the title or thumbnail of this video because essentially, like I'm definitely too young to have remembered quadraphonic, but I think my dad did. And quadraphonic was when they had four speakers and it was two in the front, two in the back. And it used an analog processing to make the rear channels do things. The thing is, it's 2023 and they're selling this unit and it's not that old. This isn't like, oh, we made this in the 70s and we're doing it again. This is as modern a tech as you can get without touching digital. It's, it's wildly clean also. So now we've added some back channels. Let's take the back channels away now. And again, this, it would be a more uh, linear volume knob if I had a different amplifier over there. So now let's take the back level away 
and we're in the same song, and it's a very good song for testing this because it's very consistent. This is Space Dandy, Dandy in Love. If you're not seeing the anime, Space Dandy, highly recommend it. So now we're going to take the dimensions and turn it all the way to narrow and turn this back up. And now it sounds like my center channel is what's playing this sound. Okay. Putting it up all the way to wide. I'll put that back up. And now I don't know what speakers are playing that. I did find my sweet spot is never quite fully wide. It's always like three o'clock. Just enough of a width gain. Because what will happen is, and I here's the reason this is here. Right, let's just get to the, the long and short of it. Let's put the EQ on. We're going to add a little bit of highs because when you use the tube and you use all these uh, effects and things, it tends to pull the detail away just a little bit. So you put that highs up just a touch and all of a sudden they're back. And then the low end, since I have a sub, I really don't need to add any, but I'm a masochist, so I'll put that up just, just a little bit. Both of these are now just sitting like this. What's going to happen is you're going to play a song and you're going to, if you have this in arm's reach, you're going to start fucking with it. Because, you know what, this sounds pretty cool. I'm going to try this, and I'm going to try this, and I'm going to try this, and I'm going to try... Oh, my God. And then you're going to keep messing with it over and over and over again until you find it perfectly dialed in for this song. And that's where the crux comes. Like, that's just... Ah, oh, ah, oh, look, look. I really wish I could show you this without it reflection that sounds amazing like i i could just go right back to this down this centered bypass the thing and that song is happening just right in front of us on speakers speakers i love speakers that are being too pre-amplified and it sounds so good but then i start fucking with this again just And it's a whole different ball game. And the reason I say you need to put this here, and this is the big thing, is the next song you put on, maybe it's a vocal track, which this isn't, and this isn't. Alison Krauss, there you go. Skip forward. So Alison Krauss is singing. And with the sound stage enhanced, it sort of takes what Alison Krauss would normally be with some center imaging, and it spreads her apart. Don't think about it that way. Don't, don't, don't do it. You did it in your head. Stop doing it. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to slide her back into the center. We're going to try that just at zero. Sounds good. We're going to take it a little bit narrower, just a touch narrower. It focuses vocals to like a pinpoint. When you take the dimension down, you're not you're not taking it to normal where it's just normal. You're taking the na the you're narrowing the sound stage. So even if your speakers are placed slightly too far apart, you can kind of correct that. It's it's not monofying the the song, but it's certainly bringing it closer to what would be just if you had a center channel. So we don't have any back channels on. We got the EQ still on with a little bit of bump here and here. We could kill the EQ, drop that a little bit, add some back channel, and just oh fucking god I, I don't want to be the lame person who's like this adds a whole new dimension to your listening but this adds a whole new dimension to your listening literally the, the third dimension or the fifth dimension I don't know which one is beyond time because and this is why it's been here for weeks I haven't just been listening to music like I said I've been watching media on this setup uh, granted, I love these speakers, but the odds of me putting it to zero off an EQ bypass and listening to it was like 3%. Because everything I listen to just sounds more engaging and f more full and obviously more room filling. You're literally adding speakers to the rear more so than you could with just the dimensional knob on the small unit, the SSX. You're adding width or narrowing width on both the fronts and the rears because this dimension knob controls that as well. So once you've added the back channels in, 
if you go wide, if you go super wide of the dimension and raise the back channels up, which is as loud as I can, I could turn it on, and we turn on the EQs, so we got a little more treble in there, and we just slam the low end to a million. Well, now it sounds broken as hell. That's up too loud, and that has to go down. There's, you can mess up music and make it sound worse. Absolutely. Which is why I think you need to be able to touch this. And I talked to them, and they were like, well, you know how we can control the volume knob with, 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 with the remote? It is possible, they said, possible, that maybe some other knobs could have those sorts of controls as well. Again, fully rotating ball bearings. I made fun of it when the, the glass ball bearings are in the um, the, the chord mojo, but this is actually kind of cool a feeling. Um, that's the, I would say that's the ultimate goal of this. I'm an asshole. I'm willing to sit down on my couch sideways with my foot on a goddamn giant inflatable ball, link in the description, and have this unit parked right here. The reason there's fingerprints all over it is because for weeks, I've just been enjoying it. it. It's beyond the point of like, Zeos needs to do a review. It's got to the point where it's like, well, Zeos kind of can't do reviews right now. He's busy. He's busy just, let's get out of Alison Krauss. Stop thinking that. You don't know nothing about this film. Oh God. Perfect song. Wasting My Young Years by London Grammar. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So she's vocals. We're going to go to zero. We're going to bring the back up just a little bit to give a little, just a little bit of presence. You don't need million dollar speakers in the rear. In fact, if I could give advice to Black Ice Audio for the next audio show they attend, put smaller speakers back there because those big heresies were, they don't, they're not needed. You need something that's going to get to a potential faster than the heresies. The heresies want a lot or the Fortes want a lot. Um, I should say. So we're gonna leave. We're gonna definitely lower the low end to zero. We're gonna keep keep just a slight, just EQ up there. It's. I love this unit. And the problem comes when I have to review speakers. Like, just okay. I'm done with these. It's time to review something brand new. Am I going to be able to play with it in just stereo? Like, okay, I, I, if I could shut the tube pre off on this, so I could just have like pure analog in, analog out, just to hear it, which I can do if I flip around enough wires and connectors. Would I ever? I feel like this has made my sitting here, listening space, just way more fun. It's $2,500. This is not just a toy. It, the only thing I could recommend you do is if you like Zeos, I don't know if I'm sold on this, get the SSX. Spend less than $600 because you're going to get this dimension knob and it's going to be only RSA ins and only RSA out, but you're going to get a dimension knob and you get a little baby bass boost, which isn't as clean. And like another thing about it is it's not just an EQ. Like he's done, oh, I got to get to the goddamn the thing that he wrote oh no my fucking keyboard's dying please don't die yeah now where is the uh the zero feedback design cast code circuit redesigned by jim fosgate who has added mosfet output to give musical forms of tubes with the speed of any detail of a current solid state uh dimension controls adds a greater sense of depth space and pulls a sound stage outside of your head oh by the way yeah when you put this to a headphone amplifier all the things i'm saying also apply, although it's really hard to get rear channels to work with a set with a um, headphone. I mean, it's probably doable if you're wearing IMs and headphones and had them. To, please don't. Um, yeah, you can increase or decrease the bass up to 15 decibels and the highs 11 decibels. But where's the thing? Uh, high performance tube, uh, flexible electronic approach is solving multiple issues, buffering signal volt control, high and low frequencies, focusing on expanding 3D image for rear output options or creating analog surround system. Blah, 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 full tape loop, dedicated rear subwoofer for channels, and a carbon-wrapped chassis. So the thing I was trying to read about is probably logic display. Oh, yeah, it's logic display. It's cool. Go up. Up. All right. I think my keyboard finally uh, kicked the bucket. We, we go up here? We're going to go up here. Oh, no. It's switching between tabs. 
I failed as a reviewer. You know, just look, I'm not going to read this whole web page to you. I'd love to just do that. By the way, this in silver looks fucking phenomenal. The glass would probably be less reflective, but I mean, for face reveals, it'd be way better. I kind of would have preferred it. And it's wrapped in a silver uh, carbon fiber as well. So yeah, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, I'm probably, of all the things that Black Ice has sent me, like the Tube amp, the F11, and the original SX, SSX, which is like, that's affordable for everybody. If you have a stereo system and you're willing to have some wiring, and keep in mind, I have my source here, and I have to bring power over for this and the source, and then I have, here's a subwoofer out, and then I got, so I've got some like, tripping hazards going on right now but my god is it fucking worth it like i am literally riding in my music at this point it's not just like oh put it on and that's an that's another reason why it's like i can't mount it in there there's no fucking way well, we got one more thing we should be doing right now hold on so now this is where i'm going to be changing that input to coaxial and then turn this up. Oh, I have to turn on the puffin. The puffin's off. But now that I've turned the puffin on. Shh. On a weird day, I'd be I can't next track on that. But let's see, we want to add some back channels to that. We want to put the EQ on. We want to definitely add lots of low end because it's an old vinyl. We're going to take the treble down a little bit and we're going to just scratch that dimension to like two, two o'clock. I would love to show you just me sitting here playing the song and tweaking things and going, okay, this is out, this is in. It's hard to do on a YouTube video because YouTubes are, they have really bad music policies. The epic score is playing, wait. Epic score is playing. If I shut off shuffle and I have to switch this back, but anyways. It, I mean, we could even crank the low end even more. What? Cats are yelling. Let's see what song that is. People are gonna ask. In case you're wondering what album this is. No, behave, behave. This is the Tarantino experience. This is a gift from a good friend. I think that's disc side D. California Dreamin', Strawberry Letter 23 by the Brothers Johnson. I think that's where we're at. We're da are we at? There's no way we're at California Dreamin'. Hmm. No fighting or other things. So yeah, this is like a 50 minute video and I don't didn't want it to be, but it's one of those things that I can't convince you to buy this in like a 20 minute, hey everybody, here's what the knobs and buttons do. Wee. This is, this. the longer I use something, the more I love the thing I'm using, the more I wanna just spend time telling you about it. Like that asshole friend that invites you over, makes you some tea and is like, hey, do you wanna hear me give my one hour long speech about why you should buy the Black Eyes Audio Fusion F360? No, well, too bad I drugged the tea. We're about to go for a ride. Um, let's switch this over again. All line outs, inputs, II2S. All right, so that sounds bad. Let's take this. We gotta bring the bass down. We gotta bring the dimensions flat. It, it's like every time I was changing tracks, listening, because I I'd shuffle. If you had like one album, you could probably set this and be good for the album. But I am a person who shuffles to epic score, who shuffles to the I want sex and candy. I shuffle to everything. So when I put up the song, which just faded out, by the way. Could you not?
So without having any rear channels, without having any rear channels, this sounds like it's behind me already once I turn the dimension up. So I think what I'd end up doing on this particular track is focus it, actually bring the dimension down, give it there, give it some placement, and then just... So there I'm happiest. Brought the dimension all the way down, back level just, just a taste up. Just a little bit, because there's a lot of trouble going on in this song and it's gonna come from the rear. And then just the treble is just tweaked a little bit and the bass is even a little bit, even though this is a bassy track, I want more. And this is where this song sounds the best. And if I change tracks again, or three more times, or seven more times, all these epic score tracks sound the same, but I know they're copyright free, so. Perfect. Flat EQ for the highs. You know what? No rears, a little bit more dimension. Bass is good, I'll leave the bass alone. This is the song sounds the best. This does not need rear channels for this, for the, for the, I'm already getting the echo with a little bit more dimension. If I just swap those speakers to like a straight standard stereo input, just right into it, I'd be bored out of my fucking mind. And I love those speakers. It's messed me up. It's the IFI bass boost, but instead of just bass boost, it's high boost and rear channels literally, literally fucking appearing and then soundstage adjustment. And it's made in America. I mean, you saw the inside of it. That's all hand done. That's put together in a way that's like, hey, we could repeat this and we could do it right and we could do it with glass in the front of it and we could sell it. I think I've looked at a lot of stupid things in this channel. Things that are just absolutely dumb. I've been to audio shows fucking a dozen times now and you walk into a room and someone tells you about how their DAC costs more than most cars. And it's like, well, that's nice. Is it making the sound better? And they can't fucking prove it. I could turn this knob. All I gotta do is turn the knob. They could sell a million of these if they could make a million of them. And well, they would also have to make them probably like $500. But if you go to the next, I'm gonna make fucking sure that when the black ice audio appears, wherever they're appearing, I think they might be appearing in an exponent. I don't know if they're gonna set it up for that. But I would love if they sat the person down hey, here are some speakers, they've got some rears behind you, and they just bring this to you. And they explain it to you, or they have post-it notes that say, hey, volume's here, EQ, like it's pretty well labeled. I didn't know what BK level was until I understood BK's back. It could just say back level, but they put BK. As long as everyone knows what knobs they're touching, when you can physically hear the sound being altered to this sort of level, it's like, oh shit, this actually does something. And to think I spent $2,500 on a power cable when I could have spent $2,500 on this instead of that luxury power cable. It, it may, it, it's just, and then you can also shut the display off if you if that bothered you, which actually I was watching a movie down here and I had this all up and running and I was like, you know what? You're, you're blinking too much, just don't. Like it's cool, but I don't. And it's nice that I could just be like, don't. You know, this unit will sell to anyone who has the money and touches it. That's the thing. I'm the I'm the guy that's touching it now. I have the YouTube channel. I have the love. I need to make this go to places. And I I don't even like I don't even know what else would I pull out. Like what would even happen if I put the dimension knob in the goddamn Broadmans? Like what if I narrow the dimension? How is it how is it going to do that? But would it try? The only thing, and I'm gonna count this as the smallest negative possible. The only thing is you're forced to use a tube pre. Now the whole thing's analog already, but if you're the type of person that wants absolutely 100% the analog you're getting in is the analog you're getting out, 
This probably isn't the amp for you, or the probably isn't the pre for you. Because you're gonna, add, you're automatically, even at zero, even with this down, even with the EQ bypassed, you're probably gonna be getting some tube smoothness. I know, it's like, oh, I can't get these scabies off me, AKA beautiful tube smoothness. That's still good. Like I'm not, it's not making me hate my speakers, that's for sure. And the ability to control the subwoofer, maybe even just an on-off switch for the sub-outs would be another thing I would maybe want. Because there's just sometimes I want, I wish that was lower or I wish that wasn't on. And if I had a full remote control of that amplifier, I do have remote control of the speaker amplifiers because it's a separate powered speaker. I could even control the source if I wanted to. But you have control over all your other things. And then this, oh my God. That's that's the ultimate in, how do I put this without offending a bunch of audiophiles who are old as fuck? Fucking old as fuck audiophiles who are just like, nah, purity, only want the purest signal with the purest, g fuck that. This is what you want. You, you're done buying. Once you're done buying and tuning and all oh, this DAC and this sounds best with this amp, once you're just, once that's out of your head and you're like, you know what? I'm done. I've got the most expensive speakers and the, a decent source. I'm using II2S and the, for digital. Now I just want to fuck around. Here you go. Now you can tweak to your heart's content and do things every track. If it's here, if it's right, if it's an arm's length. And obviously if uh, honestly, if I was you, if I'm keeping this thing, I would have, I would build a custom mount for it because all the controls are really squeezed onto this, this section. So I don't even need to see this. I would just have something mounted right here on the arm of the couch where it's on a 45 degree angle and I wouldn't even have to look at it. In fact, I don't have to look at it now. I could tell, I could do all these knobs without looking because I've been playing with it for so long. I would just want to reach over and be like, hold on, I'm going to a little more low end. I feel like I'm engaged with the music. I feel like I'm the one making the music happen the way I want it to happen with this thing. Let's unpause that. So much rear. You know what? Let's get risky and we'll go into shuffle one more time and then I'm gonna end this video because I, I can't take up all of your time, but this is not something that I'm gonna sell you because it has three, it has, actually how many knobs does it have? It's got five knobs, six knobs, it's got six knobs. Can I sell you something with six knobs and three switches? And you're gonna be like, well, four switches if you count that as a fourth switch. And you're gonna be like, I don't know, ZS, what does it do? And I'm gonna be like, what do you want it to do? Where'd my shuffle go? There we go. You know, everything I put on it, I want to listen to. And different songs with different, like, this is Basement Jack's uh, Raindrops, the Joker and Gins remix, in case you're wondering. So let's put the EQ back on, touch it a little more bass, just, just this. Every song wants this thing attached to it. And every song wants you to play with it just a little bit harder. You're literally adding rear channels. Just that alone and getting into the quadraphonic thing is like, well, fuck it. All right, I'm done. <sighs> Will you see this thing in future reviews? I mean, that's wholly and utterly dependent on if I can control myself. Because if I have to review a set of speakers, usually you want me to review it as the watcher, as linear as possible. Vinyl, by the way. In your arms so tight. Let me go. Everything's all right. Hooked on a feel. It's literally, I'm hooked on a feeling. And every time I play with anything down here now, it's gonna be like, but I wonder if I fusioned it a little bit. 
Guitar is only in the left channel there. Um, I'm done. Uh, buy this if you have the money. Find it at a show. Find out where Black Ice is displaying it if you have the travel time. And consider it for the love of God. If you're one of those people who's just like, no, I'm going to improve it with... I mean, acoustic panels are one thing. I have no problem with treating a room. But if you're starting to get into the money where you're spending on shit that may not be real, this is real. And it's completely customizable. And what I was going to do, one of the reasons I took the top off to show you the tubes inside, is you can swap the tube and get a different 6SN7, 6NS, yeah, that one, and get different sound by default and then do all this to it, which is nutty. So, yeah, anyway, this linked, everything else linked. I don't even know you could buy these anymore. These things are the beastly of beastlies um, with the real face plug. Wallpaper in the horde. A Patreon subscribe star. Support this channel. If they try to take this back, I'm going to need your guys' help to uh, prevent them with dollars. Because I want to play with it so... I want to play with it. Music should be fun. I should come... You, this is... Uh, you're my, your mother's not coming to say, stop playing with your music and just listen to it right. Shut the fuck up, imaginary mom who isn't my mom because my mother would be fine with this. Get the fuck out of my room. I just want to play with my music. That's what music is for. Very, very rarely, music is for work. Music should always be for play. And this is the most fun you could have with it. This is the Play-Doh fucking machine that you squeeze it out and the little stars come out. It's like, oh my God, it's so cool. Anyway, Patreon subscribe to our reviews early, participate in yard sales. Here are the sound demos. I'm tempted to sound demo this. I just don't know how. Like what mic will pick up what's happening in the rear and then it might be doable. I might give it a shot. We'll see if there's enough requests for it because I think that would be fucking awesome. And then I could play whatever songs I want because in the sound demos, um, where they're on the Patreon, it doesn't matter. And I can just play things. It's great. Anyway, that's for the $5. For $10, you get the behind the scenes private Telegram chat where you can ask me questions directly. You can um, get into the lifetime swap meet channel to buy, sell, and trade gear. Because you don't have money for this, you could sell, you know, kidneys and children. Just put them right in there. Human trafficking is not a problem. Wait, that was a joke. State that very loudly. That was a joke. But you know, the swap meet's got a bunch of people in it, all buying, selling, and trading gear. And you get into that for life once you're a $10 patron. And uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm done. And it's kind of sucks. I waited for weeks because, oh, I'm not done with this yet. I'm not, I haven't thought what I'm going to say yet. And I knew exactly what I was going to say. From like the third day I had this set up, I was like, oh, shit i just want to keep using this despite having like one of the best surround sounds because i haven't even had the rear channels for my surround sounds they've been dedicated to this and you know what watching two channel content i'm fine with that you're watching an anime or something you need good vocals you turn the dimension down you turn the rears up and you watch it it's 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 crazy it's crazy. I got to stop my my vinyl's about to run out. I'm about to run out. I'll see you all in a couple days. Check out my other channels. Thank you for supporters. Thank you for everyone who supported me. Thank you for everyone who's sending me out to Expona and uh, oh god Munich. And I will uh, see you all in the next one. Let's let's, just, let's give this goodbye. Hate them, hate them, love them, like them, eh, I mean, wouldn't buy them, would tell you to buy them, might listen to them, those are ugly, kidding, love them, and those are nice. And I'm stepping on a cable. <laughs>